If entering one temple is the first step toward enlightenment, then visiting 10,000 Buddhist temples, stupas, and monasteries must be nirvana. At least that would seem to be the governing architectural principle in Bagan, Myanmar, between the 9th and 13th centuries. That's when this ancient city in Southeast Asia witnessed the construction of more than 13,000 religious shrines. Over time, neglect, looting, fires, earthquakes destroyed many of the structures. But today, seven centuries later, more than 2,200 remain in a 26 square mile area in the Bagan Plains along the Irrawaddy River. In 2014, when I was in Myanmar, Bagan was the primary attraction in the country, hoping to build a tourism industry after many years of being closed to most of the outside world by a military dictatorship. And the best way to get a sense of the scale of this ancient Buddhist empire is in a hot air balloon. From this bird's eye view, when floating above the clamor and conflict of the masses in their daily struggle for survival, up here, above it all, it's easier to understand the Buddhist practice of meditation. The belief that meditation can bring inner peace, reducing or even eliminating stress, anxiety, depression, aggression, prejudice. That through meditation, one can find compassion, kindness, empathy. On the other hand, a vast landscape of temples and stupas is a reminder that sometimes it's about the money. These shrines were erected by monarchs and the wealthy who believed that to build a temple was to earn merit. So we returned to earth realizing that just thoughts and prayers aren't enough to ensure peace, love, and understanding. Obviously, I'm not a Buddhist scholar, or actually a scholar of anything, but when once again face to face with all these shrines, I contemplate what seems to be the essence of this religion. Buddhists believe that existence is suffering, that Buddhism offers a path to overcome suffering, which is caused in part by desire and attachment to self. The principles or rules to live by are don't kill, be kind, don't steal, be generous, don't cheat on your spouse, be faithful, don't lie, be honest, and don't get drunk, be sober. The penalty for failure to live up to the principles, karma, Karma means what you do in this life determines what will happen to you in your next life. Two years after I left Bagan, I wondered about what those temples and stupas represented and about the concept of karma. My thoughts triggered by Myanmar's military launching a campaign of violence against the country's Rohingya Muslim minority and encouraging Buddhist nationalists to join in the attacks. At least 10,000 Rohingya have been killed, thousands of women and girls victims of sexual violence, and one million Rohingya are now living in refugee camps. And then, on February 1st, this year, the military seized power, taking over the democratic government, declaring the November elections were marred by fraud. The democratically elected leaders, who won in a landslide, were taken into custody. And so I thought, if karma does come, it's gonna be a bitch. <laughs>